All right, guys, we are live. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to my weekly live stream. I am John Kapler, the group admin, and of course, founder of Focus SketchUp. And it's good to be back here. Last week, I had a terrible cold, feeling much better this week. I'm back at it. So I'm excited for this one because uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different than before. We are going to kind of put our business hats on and think about something from the business perspective of how do we charge for 3D renders. This is actually stemmed from a question I get a lot from students uh, that may be new to using SketchUp, using V-Ray, and maybe they have a design business already. Maybe they're starting from scratch. Uh, but the question always is, you know, how much should I be charging for 3D renders? And it's a great question, and there's a lot to it. So I'm going to devote this live stream to answering that question and kind of give some insight what, uh, as to what I've found works best for Arch Manor, which is my design company that I run with my wife. So without further ado, let's get into it. So pricing for 3D renders. First question, is this for a business, maybe a designer, maybe a firm, or is this for a client? Because they're very separate and you got to keep them separate as far as the pricing structure. So for a business, um, you want to make sure you charge hourly. Anything B2B should be hourly. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, what I like to do for new clients especially is charge up front for a block of time. So if a designer comes to me and says, hey, I've got this design. Can you render it? And I'll say, sure. Um, I'm going to start you off with a five-hour block of time. And of course, that may vary depending on what the project is. Um, but if we go over that, uh, that block, then it's going to be this much per hour. So that usually works well. If it's a client that you've worked with before, you trust them, they pay on time, by all means, you can do monthly invoicing. But I do have found that for most new projects, bill up front because getting money after the fact is very, very hard. All right. The other type of uh, work is for clients, and this is probably more common in, in our field. Um, a lot of us, uh, you know, just we have these projects. We may do mood boards. We may uh, do other design packages, whatever your deliverable is, and you want to include 3D renders in it, which is great. I always say, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, and when they can see your design rendered, I mean, it's a game changer. They are much more likely to sign away and say, hey, yep, let's move forward. Let's do this. Let's buy all this furniture, right? So a picture is worth a thousand words. So for clients, there are a couple things I do want to mention up front. Um, the first is that clients like things in packages. So they don't like to go by the hour because they're always unsure of, well, how many hours is this going to take? And I don't want to just you know sign a blank check and then have you run. And you know something I thought would be five hours is now 25. So clients like things containerized. So I always suggest uh, you know, making packages for specific spaces, whether it's a, a basic e-design for a room, whether it's a kitchen or a bathroom. So separating your packages like that, and then make sure in your packages you list out the scope. So that means you tell them exactly how many renders you're going to create, what the timeline is, um, also what the fee is. So if you go over uh, a, uh, let's say, well, let's back the trolley up. In that scope, you need to also specify the revisions. So this is something that a lot of newbies will say, oh, I'll just give them two free revisions and that should be sufficient. Not a good idea because revisions can take a long time when you have to go back and adjust a 3D model. So I always suggest having only one revision per e-design or package. Um, of course, that could change based on what your client needs. If they know they're going to change their mind a lot. We'll put that in the contract up front, but make sure your price reflects that accordingly. And with your revision count, make sure that you uh, specify, hey, if there's more time needed for this design, after I complete the scope of this work, it's going to be this fee per hour. So always do an hourly fee up front uh, so they know what to expect if things do go over that. Because a lot of clients, they might not know how many revisions they need. They may change their mind quite often, but if you have that built into the contract, it makes things so much easier. All right. The next thing to mention is uh, what we use for Arch Manor is we use a program called MyDoma. 
And MyDoma is an online tool where it's a communication platform and a project management service. So that's what we use for all of our projects. We put them in there. We invite the clients to use it. They can log on and we control invoices. We control quotes, products, contracts, all that within MyDoma. Um, I'm not getting paid any money to promote them. I'm just saying that we've used this product for probably the past two or three years now, and it's been great. So if you want to use that, I know they have a free trial. I think it's mydomastudio.com. Check that out because that's what we use, especially handy for the contracts. Um, so that's something where the scope that I was just talking about, we will lay this all out inside of a contract and then send that to them through the portal. They can sign it electronically. It's super easy. But that way you have it all within your project file and you can reference that if you need to go back to say, hey, you went past your revision count. It's now going to be this much per hour. All right. So that being said, a big question now is what about price? So we've talked about kind of some scope issues and, uh, you know, businesses versus clients. What about price? And this is something that varies greatly depending on a lot of factors. One, where you are. You know, someone in where I am in DC, you know, obviously this is an expensive area to live. So prices are going to be higher than somewhere, let's say, in Kansas. Nothing against Kansas. Um, so keep that in mind where, where you are. Also keep in mind your experience level. Obviously, if you're an experienced designer, you can charge more because you have that social credibility. If you're starting out, maybe you want to lower prices a little bit or come in a little bit lower than others. That's great too. So keep that in mind. And then also, how badly do you want this project or e-design project in, in, in general? Maybe it's something you want to offer, but you're not excited about it. Well, raise your prices so you don't get that much a response to your product, but it's there if someone needs it. And if they pay for that, great, because the price is right where you are not you know, upset about doing the work. So pricing is one of those areas where it can really vary depending on, on all those factors. And I'd say the general range is maybe anywhere from $75 to $200 an hour, give or take, is adequate depending on all those factors. So if you're somewhere in that realm, you're doing good. Um, but keep in mind too that uh, you, know, you can also use your renders that you use for client work. You can kind of double dip a little bit and use those for promotional work, for your socials, your website, your email list, your marketing. That sells your services. So maybe you do want to come in a little bit lower with your price to get that work in, knowing that you can use the renders you produce for that client for your own marketing purposes, right? Right, so maybe taking the hit on the, the short term where maybe you're not making what you should be, you know, when you look at cost per hour. Uh, but remember, you're using their project for your benefit too, because you can use those renders for your own social, for your newsletter, uh, to bring in more clients and more work. So uh, keep that in mind as you go through and try to establish the right price. Um, also, just make sure to include in your contract, this is a big tip, a clause in there that says that you can use any renders you produce for this client or project in your own marketing, your own socials. Uh, make sure that's specified in there. I'm not a lawyer, so you know, I'm not going to give you a word for word clause, um, but always put something in there that kind of gives you the rights to use those for your own purposes. That way, the client can, will hopefully read that in your contract, and when they see you know, their space on your social, they won't freak out. Um, all right. So uh, one thing to remember, too, is that SketchUp and V-Ray, this is a long game. So it's not a short game. This is the long game. You're playing it. You're investing the time to learn this. And the more clients you bring in, the more practice you get, the better you get, the more efficient you get at modeling. Um, also, the more components you will build in your component library, the more materials you'll have in your material library. These are all things that speed up your work down the road. It makes you more efficient. So, you know, if you start out right now, you're going to be very inefficient compared to where you're going to be in a year or two. And that's okay. That's part of the process. Um, but just know that going up front where maybe the first few projects, you're looking at the financials and you say, hey, I'm losing money by making these renders. Well, keep in mind that you're using these renders for marketing as well. And you're also... Uh, 
you're putting in time into yourself. You're investing into your SketchUp and V-Ray skills. You're practicing, you're getting more efficient, and you're building up your libraries, and that's key. So keep that in mind, too, as you go forward with your rendering business. All right, so that's pretty much what I wanted to kind of talk about in this video, the different pricing structures. Um, again, I like for businesses, always charge hourly, always do it in blocks of time. For clients, they like packages. So put things in a nice package with a ribbon, but back it up with a contract with an hourly rate and a clause. And every, every project, every client is different. So keep that in mind too. If you need to modify your contract for a certain client, do it. Uh, but again, we use MyDoma. That keeps us organized. And it's a nice portal for the client to log on to where they can see all of their project info, whether it's the contract, whether it's products, quotes, uh, renders, all that stuff. It's all kept in MyDoma. Again, there's other competitors to that too. You're welcome to use those. But MyDoma has worked well for us. Um, so that's it. Yeah, if you have a pricing structure that you uh, find that's very helpful or you prefer, by all means, uh, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I always love hearing what works for people. Obviously, you know, I'm... I work for Arch Manor. That's what we do. That's what works for us. But other thing, other pricing structures may work better for other companies, and that's great. But drop it in the comments below so it helps others. Um, again, if you want to kind of jump into the training aspect of SketchUp and V-Ray, uh, I will invite you to look in the description or the comments below for a link to my courses. Um, I've got a, a three different courses there on SketchUp and V-Ray and a bundle offer too. Also, I just launched my seven-day boot camp, uh, which is an awesome way for anyone who is new to SketchUp or maybe has a little bit of experience with SketchUp to kind of dive in. It's a seven-day program and gets trained up on SketchUp and V-Ray. Uh, so that's in the links too, so check that out. And yeah, guys, uh, this was a fun one. This is more of less skills and drills, more kind of business-oriented, but it's a question I get asked all the time, so I'm happy to answer it here. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions or comments, Drop them below, and I'll be sure to answer them. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Have a great week, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.